In a world once ruled by uranium, shaping the destiny of nations, today a different metal, lighter, more abundant, and far safer, is quietly igniting a new revolution. A single element capable of powering an entire nation for 20,000 years. A technology that could run power plants in the middle of deserts without needing a single drop of cooling water. A clean, sustainable energy system, producing almost no significant radioactive waste. Thorium, a name long forgotten, is making a comeback, but not in America, not in Europe. It's in China, deep in the Gobi Desert, where a silent reactor hums, needing no water, no high pressure, quietly challenging the entire model of global energy. While America is still arguing over outdated nuclear energy, China has quietly built the future with thorium. While the world dreams of fusion, China has already moved closer to the reality of molten salt thorium reactors. And if you think this is just a small experiment, prepare to change everything you thought you knew about the global energy map. Join Top 10 Discoveries Official as we dive deeper into this story, uncovering the hidden technologies behind the world's first thorium reactor, the geopolitical ambitions few dare to speak about, and the silent race that could permanently shift the balance of global power. Thorium, the 90th element on the periodic table, was long overlooked by the world. It couldn't self-sustain a chain reaction. It wasn't easily weaponized. It was seen as the outsider during the nuclear energy race of the 20th century. Yet its perceived weakness might just be its greatest strength in the 21st century. A world desperate for clean, safe energy without the constant fear of nuclear war. Thorium isn't rare. It's almost everywhere, from Indian beach sands to Australia's rare earth mines. Estimates suggest the Earth's thorium reserves are three to four times greater than uranium, making it a tempting option for a world growing increasingly anxious about the future of traditional nuclear fuel. Unlike uranium-235 or plutonium-239, thorium-232 doesn't split apart on its own when hit by slow neutrons. Instead, it absorbs a neutron and slowly transforms into uranium-233, an excellent stable fuel capable of sustaining a highly efficient chain reaction. In a perfect world, thorium would be the foundation for safer, cleaner reactors. Reactors harder to weaponize and far easier to manage. But fuel is only half the story. The technology that holds the fuel is what ultimately decides its fate. That's where the molten salt reactor comes in. Arguably the biggest leap in nuclear technology since the birth of the pressurized water reactor. Imagine this. Instead of solid fuel rods submerged in water, both the fuel and coolant are dissolved into a flowing mixture of molten salts. No extreme pressure needed to keep water from boiling. No sudden explosions from steam ruptures. Molten salts, with boiling points over 1,400 degrees Celsius, quietly carry heat away from the reactor's core stable and resilient, like the Earth's own underground rivers of metal. More importantly, molten salt reactors come with a built-in natural safety feature. Beneath the reactor sits a frozen plug of salt, kept solid by a flow of cool air. If the power cuts out, whether from an accident, attack, or natural disaster, the cooling stops, the frozen plug melts, and the molten salt mixture drains safely into underground tanks. No explosions, no meltdowns, no Chernobyls. The chain reaction halts simply and automatically by the laws of nature. A design so elegant, it's almost foolproof. And the miracles don't stop there because molten salt reactors operate at atmospheric pressure and extremely high temperatures. Their thermal efficiency, the ability to convert heat into electricity, far surpasses conventional light water reactors. Studies show molten salt reactors could hit thermal efficiencies of up to 45%, compared to just 30 to 33% for modern PWRs. And here's another strategic advantage. Molten salt reactors can burn old nuclear waste. Future generations of molten salt reactors could run not just on fresh thorium, but also recycle spent uranium fuel. 
dramatically shrinking the nuclear waste mountains that have been piling up over the last 70 years. Thorium, molten salts, high efficiency, intrinsic safety. All the pieces were ready. The only thing missing was a nation bold enough to turn them into reality. And China wasn't about to miss that opportunity. In the heart of the harsh, barren Gobi Desert, far from the noise of bustling urban centers, China is quietly operating a machine that could forever change how humanity thinks about nuclear energy. The world's first thorium molten salt reactor, known as TMSRLF-1, isn't just an engineering marvel. It's a strategic statement, a silent reminder that the new energy race has begun, and Beijing is already pulling ahead. In October 2023, after years of low-profile development, TMSR LF-1 achieved stable criticality. Six months later, by June 2024, the reactor was operating at full capacity, generating 2 megawatts of thermal output. By October 2024, it had reached a historic milestone, refueling while still in operation, a feat that many Western experts once claimed was unachievable within this generation. Behind this entire project stands Dr. Xu Hongji, the lead scientist at the Shanghai Institute of Applied Physics. Starting with just a few dozen people, Xu expanded his team to more than 400 scientists and engineers in just two years, demonstrating a level of commitment and persistence far beyond the short-term political cycles often seen in the West. Under Xu's leadership, China didn't merely replicate the 1960s experiments at America's Oak Ridge Laboratory. They improved, modernized, and brought them into real-world operation. What's even more remarkable is how China capitalized on America's once-classified research, shelved in the 1970s when Washington shifted focus toward uranium for weapons development. Beijing learned from those mistakes. They didn't rush into uranium to build bombs. They chose thorium, safer, cleaner, and incapable of producing plutonium-239, the primary material for nuclear weapons. But why is thorium? Because thorium, according to the latest studies, could power China not just for decades, but for tens of thousands of years. Mines like Bayanobo in Inner Mongolia are estimated to hold thorium reserves abundant enough to fuel China's entire energy needs for 20,000 to 25,000 years. A nearly surreal number when compared to the fleeting lifespan of modern civilizations. And the differences go beyond mere supply. Thorium, when used in molten salt reactors, produces up to 1,000 times less long-lived radioactive waste compared to uranium. The time needed to isolate the waste drops from tens of thousands of years to around 500 years, a time frame humanity can reasonably manage. Beyond electricity generation, China is already exploring new frontiers, maritime shipping. Designs for thorium-powered container ships have been released, targeting carbon-free global shipping a sector currently responsible for nearly 3% of global greenhouse gas emissions. If successful, China wouldn't just change how we produce electricity, it would revolutionize how goods move across the world. The strategic significance of TMSR LF1 cannot be overstated. In a closed-door meeting at the Chinese Academy of Sciences in April 2025, Xu Hongjie declared, we now lead the global frontier. He likened this technology race to the fable of the tortoise and the hare. The West may have started first, but through quiet persistence, China has surged ahead. Meanwhile, the United States, the birthplace of molten salt reactor technology, remains stuck in the theory and prototype phase. Even promising projects like Bill Gates's TerraPower still focus on uranium and sodium, not yet embracing thorium as a comprehensive solution. The picture is becoming clearer by the day. On one side, China, with long-term commitment, nearly limitless resources, and proven operational capabilities. On the other, the West, hamstrung by short-term investment cycles, policy hesitation, and lack of decisive strategy for next-generation nuclear energy. TMSRLF-1 is more than a reactor. It's a declaration a blueprint for a future where power no longer belongs to those who control uranium, oil, or natural gas, but to those who master clean, sustainable, near limitless energy. And in this new game, China is already ahead.
Behind every energy revolution lies a major shift in global power. In the 20th century, uranium helped the United States dominate the world. But in the 21st century, whoever controls clean, sustainable, and affordable energy will dictate the new economic and political order. Thorium, alongside molten salt reactor technology, is emerging as a strategic asset. And with the TMSR LF1 project, China has already taken the lead. This is not just a technical victory. It's a declaration of sovereignty in the future energy race. If successful, China won't just achieve energy independence for thousands of years. It will export thorium technology as part of its Belt and Road Initiative, building a new electricity network independent of Western oil and gas. A second generation BRI, selling electricity, selling technology, and selling influence. Meanwhile, America, birthplace of the molten salt reactor, has fallen behind. Thorium projects remain stuck on paper. The biggest difference is China is investing with a 20 to 30 year vision, while the West remains shackled by short-term profits and election cycles. If this trend continues within the next two decades, China could redraw the global energy map. Countries running Chinese-built thorium reactors will be part of a new order one where the standards, operations, and rules are all set by Beijing. The question is no longer, can China do it? It's how far will China go? In the race for clean energy, whoever controls electricity controls power. And China launched this race long ago. TMSR LF1 is just the beginning, a small but ambitious test. While the world watches and waits to see if a thorium reactor can achieve stable operation in real-world conditions, Beijing has already drawn up plans for a commercial reactor network spanning entire continents. According to internal reports from the Shanghai Institute of Applied Physics, the next step is scaling up, upgrading from the current 2-megawatt thermal reactor to a 10-megawatt electric reactor by 2030. A leap not just in output, but in operational scale grid integration, and modular production standardization. But China isn't stopping at small numbers. Their 2040 strategic plan envisions a new generation of modular thorium reactors, each unit producing 100 megawatts of electricity, mass producible, quickly transportable, and assembled as easily as standard shipping containers. The idea isn't just to build power plants, it's to sell clean energy as a service much like China revolutionized solar energy and electric vehicles. These new energy hubs, combining solar, wind, molten salt heat storage, and thorium reactors, will transform deserts, plateaus, and even remote islands into untouchable energy fortresses. Not only will this guarantee China's energy security, but it will also create massive opportunities to export electricity or export the reactors themselves as a new form of soft power. Meanwhile, the U.S. faces a dangerous crossroads. If it ignores the thorium revolution, America risks repeating its solar energy mistake, leading the research only to end up importing the technology from China, moving from dominance to dependence. A 21st century where America buys clean energy technology from Beijing is no longer just a distant possibility. It's taking shape right now quietly. If the U.S. wants to compete, it must enact systemic changes. Reinvest in molten salt reactor development with thorium as the centerpiece, not uranium. Break down outdated legal barriers designed for traditional uranium reactors that don't fit molten salt designs. Fund long-term research projects with 20 to 30 year timelines, not short-term impatient cycles. Build its own thorium supply chain, because while thorium is abundant, most current reserves lie within China's strategic partners. Above all, America needs to revive the spirit of the Manhattan Project, a nationwide commitment transcending political divides to protect its technological leadership and global power against a rival that sees the opportunity first. There's no more time for thinking about it a few more years or waiting for the market to decide. In the thorium energy game, either the U.S. writes the rules or lives under rules written by someone else. The world is standing at the doorstep of a new energy era, an era not opened by weapons or diplomacy, but by silent technologies hidden deep in deserts, 
where the first thorium reactors are quietly igniting a new invisible power. As China accelerates the construction of a thorium reactor network, the U.S. and the West are still hesitating outside the race. Can thorium really solve the global energy crisis? How will China reshape the world's power map with molten salt reactors? And most importantly, will America step into the race before it's too late? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like, share this video with anyone who needs to know about this silent revolution. And if you want to keep uncovering the major secrets taking shape right now, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Because what we've just seen is only the beginning. Top 10 Discoveries Official will return with more spectacular discoveries, monumental projects, and untold stories from around the world. See you next time.